Entering your first race can feel like a big deal. So we want to talk you through how you enter your first one, from what to do during the race. I better do that a bit later. Sorry, as I was saying, doing your first bike race can feel like a big step. So we wanted to take you through the process of entering your first event, explaining what to do immediately before it and during it as well, with me as your domestic. To do that, we needed a willing guinea pig, but finding one in our office that hadn't already done a bike race seems like a tough ask. Until we heard the surprising news that ex-pro triathlete Fraser Cartmel, presenter on the Global Triathlon Network, had never done a bike race. No, it's true. I haven't ever pinned on a number, raced a bike race as such because, well, I was too busy racing triathlon, if I'm honest. I was always training for that and racing with that goal in mind. And if I'm perfectly frank, I didn't really want to race any bike races. I mean, there wasn't even any swimming or running involved, so there wasn't that big an appeal. So not only will we be able to walk you through how to do your first bike race, we'll also find the answer to that age old question, can triathletes actually ride bikes? Uh. Firstly, you have to find a race. The best way to do that is to search on the website of your national governing body. In our case in the UK, it's British Cycling. Road racing is split into categories based on fitness and ability. For your first race, you will of course be ranked in the lowest category. To climb the ranks, you need to earn points, which you pick up through good placings in races. If you then stop getting points, you can drop back down a category at the end of the season. Which is why I'm now back at the bottom and able to race alongside our newbie Fraser. So it's the morning of my big crit race with uh, GCN this evening. So I've just got an email from Sai, which is actually a little bit lazy because he's just sat over there. But I know what roadies are like and they don't like walking too much. So I think it's a little bit of a kit list. So I'm going to have a look through and see what he says. Hey mate, looking forward to our tear up tonight. Just a quick reminder of your kit list. Bike, don't laugh, people have forgotten them. Helmet, shoes, shorts, again, don't laugh. I've forgotten them in the past. And a jersey. Uh, gloves, some cl crash protection. A lot of roadies don't like their gloves, but I'll take some. Things you might not have thought of. Socks, which is a little bit of a, a joke about us triathletes. We tend to not like racing in socks, but I'll have some of them. Safety pins, bog roll. I guess there's not many toilets around. Stick plenty of water in your bag, post-race snack, and a pre-race gel. It's only a short burn up, so we don't need to worry too much about carbs. Good to know. Eat a light meal, three hours before the start. Get there an hour before to sign on. Get changed, do a little warm up. See you there, sounds good. We're racing in the 10th and final round of the Castle Coombe Summer Series here in the UK. A race like many, many others around the world, which for me represents the heart and soul of the sport. It's on a closed circuit, in this case a local motor racing track, with races each week from the middle of spring to the middle of summer. There is a race for faster or more experienced bike riders and a slightly slower race for lower category riders. And in these cases, men and women race together. There are also youth races before as well. Um, in terms of tactics and how to approach the race, I've watched lots of bike racing on TV, so I'm hoping that might rub off a little bit, but in terms of um, how fast it's gonna be or the type of quality of riding, it's all new to me, so yeah, just a little bit nervous, for want of a better word. First thing when you get to the race is of course you go and sign on so you can make sure you can actually take the start line. And because I don't actually need to have a full racing license for the full year, today I'm just getting a one day license which I'm going to go get in there right now. So you've got no membership for anything, you've got 28 pounds in total, okay. 18 for the race, 10 for the day license. Perfect. Okay. I'll show you a couple of quid mate. <laughs> <laughs> The key to a good race starts with getting to the line on time. So find out what time the race starts and then also find out what time you should be on the start line. I tend to begin loitering around about 15 minutes or so before the gun goes. And then you need to work backwards from that time in order to give yourself space to actually fit everything in. So you need to sign on, which we've done. You need to get your bike out. You need to pin your numbers on. You need to get changed. You inevitably need to go to the loop. And then you will also probably want to go for a bit of a spin. Just make sure you also add a little bit of fat time in because 30 minutes can go by without you even noticing. And you definitely don't want to rush. Then 
the most important thing with putting a number on is not to just... To yourself. Well, no, no, <laughs> even more important than that is you kind of thread it through. So, so you ignore the eyelets and then you thread it through like that. Yeah. Because then sense. you can keep it real nice and tight and real nice and aero. There's nothing worse than a flat number. number. Yeah, so. I'm with you on that. Although I have, frankly, come equipped to win a stage of the Tour de France, you do not need a bike like this to do a road race. In fact, all you do need is drop handlebars, brakes that work, gears that work, and tyres that are properly inflated. Because one of the beauties of road racing is that while, yes, your bike does have an effect, of far more importance is your fitness and also your tactics. Still, Fraser, what, what have you brought? I just got this with me, Simon. Is this, is this gonna work? You will probably be all right on that, I reckon. Yeah, probably be all right. Should we go for a spin? Yeah. Make sure they work, and then let's talk tactics. Perfect. Right, so I'm a little bit rusty. In fact, I'm very rusty in the whole concept of tactics in a bike race. So where should I sit in the bunch for starts? I mean, I would imagine we wanna be close to the front. Yeah, the golden rule is don't be on the front, yeah. okay? So when you're on the front, then not only are you the one doing more work, someone's sitting in a slipstream, but also if you then try and attack, everyone is gonna be able to just follow you. There's no element of surprise. And if you try and respond to moves, again, you'll drag everyone with you. So the key is if you're on the front, do your turn, so don't ride like an idiot, you don't want to be antisocial, but just gently sort of ease off the gas and then someone will eventually come around. So where you do want to ride is probably in about sort of 10th to 15th wheel, but on a race like today, you don't really want to get boxed in. You always want to be able to get out at any point and then you can, you can attack or you can respond or things like that. Okay, next question. It's quite windy here tonight. So where should I be sitting roughly with the wind either side of your wheel or somebody else's wheel or directly behind it? What would you say? Okay, great question. So you always want to be sheltered. Mm -hmm. So if the wind is coming from the right, then you want to be off to someone's left. So you can feel when you get in that kind of sheltered position. Uh, what will be interesting is to see where people are attacking because you don't tend to want to attack in a headwind. So this finish straight will be a bit grim. So probably most moves will go over the top uh, where you've got a slight crosswind or then with a tailwind and then this bit will feel really slow because I think we're going to be racing up into the headwind into finish. the headwind yeah so final question about rough speeds relative to the lap and how the wind's going to affect that are we going to be stochastic you know up and down in speed or is it just going to be fast and full full gas uh well it depends really I would expect probably if you're on the front, it'll be quite stochastic, whereas if you're in the wheels, I think you'll probably have quite a nice smooth run of it. And so on a flat circuit like this, you could probably spend quite a bit of time hiding and have a real nice gentle spin. But then we want to get stuck in, don't we? We want to do some racing. So at that point, I think you need to look, look for wheels to follow, and then, but just make sure you give yourself enough time to recover. So if you, go, if you follow too many moves too quickly, you could get yourself in a bit of a hole. And then you might find that actually at the sharp end of the race. Nothing left. No, exactly. But um, the kind of stuff that comes with experience is knowing which are the right moves to follow and which, which are doomed from the start. So I'll try and talk you through that when we're in the race. I'm, not that I'm an absolute expert at that. You really should have had Lloydie, but anyway, never mind. <laughs> And just like that, the race is on. But now what? Well, firstly, we need to contain that initial adrenaline rush, let other riders lift the pace, just sit in the wheels, try to relax and save energy. Because everyone's fresh and motivated, it's unlikely that any race-winning moves will go in these opening minutes. So rather than attack off the front, try to hover between about 8th and 15th wheel. That means that you can respond to something if needed, because while unlikely, it's not completely impossible that something significant could happen in these opening minutes. Generally, a race will split at some point and a breakaway will go. Now, you should already know what type of ride you are. If you're a sprinter, you need to save as much energy as possible and perhaps gamble on it coming back together. If you can't sprint, like me and Fraser, you will want to get to the finish with as few other riders as possible. Now, if you're riding a circuit race like this, use the opening few laps to gauge which parts of the course look like they might be the likely places for the race to split. In this case, the start straight has a really strong headwind, so it is definitely not the place to attack. You'll throw energy away and struggle to get any kind of meaningful gap. In contrast, though, as the course turns left, the headwind moves to a cross tail, which is perfect attacking territory. 
that, after that left hand turn it's crosswind and so that's the point where people are going to be struggling to chase and then it's tailwind and then through the right hander exactly still the time is not yet right everyone is too fresh we need to wait for a little bit more fatigue to start to set in we are in the final third of the race now and it's still all together despite a few little attacks including from Fraser and myself if you do attack do so from further back in the group to try to get that element of surprise however always keep an eye on what's going on behind you because if you get chased down don't just keep riding on the front make sure you ease off the pedals and wait for riders to come around you if you are in the front there needs to be a very good reason for it yeah when you when you put your head down you've got to make it count because you can be the strongest guy in the race and if you spend all your yeah, all your bullets but it's looking good though with 15 minutes to go Fraser makes another move at that perfect point in the circuit and this is the one that sticks. You can tell instantly. One rider goes with him and the rest of the bunch ease up slightly because the riders are now tired enough to think twice about chasing. It's not going to be easy out there for him but he is committed and he's got plenty of horsepower. Five laps to go, and the gap is hovering at around 20 seconds. This isn't in the bag yet. Four laps to go now. If they stay away, Fraser needs to really be thinking about how he can win this. Don't lead it out into the headwind, Fraser, and leave your sprint late. Three, it's holding steady. Two laps to go. Last lap, come on, Fraser. Oh, so cruel. Finishing second in a two-up break always feels like a bitter pill to swallow. But let's not beat around the bush here. Fraser just got second in his first ever bike race. Maybe triathletes can ride bikes. Fraser, ah, yes. <laughs> Well done, that? mate. That was fantastic. Yeah, I did all right. Oh, good lad. How was you? Yeah, all right, mate. That was good fun. Flat out. Yeah. Tourist thing I've done in a long time. Fantastic, mate. Oh, that is absolutely brilliant. What fairy tale. First bike race, comes in there, gets in the brake, just misses out. But still, you've got to have something to work on. What are you doing, mate? Trainers. Got to run off the bike, Simon. Triathlon what? never dies. You are kidding go, me, mate. Got to go. Got to go. Seriously, Fraser. This is when we have beers. This is when we have beers! In all seriousness, mate, how was that? Yeah, it was brutal. I mean, you told me it was about 50 minutes, and I leaked my watch at 50 minutes after having gotten away in the little break that you nudged me into, and um, saw the sign on the lap board that said four laps to go, and that my heart just sunk as I'm committed now and I really have to go. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. It's, yeah. it's one of those circuits where when you're off the front, it's savage, but yet you can save quite a lot of energy in the wheel. So I was feeling for you dangling away out there, but. Oh mate, that was absolutely cracking. I think the, th the, th the thing is just knowing when to attack, isn't it? Knowing when to use your energy. And then once you've got that gap, then you just fully commit and your engine was enough to pull you clear. Yeah, and that's the, the, the start difference for me because it was your literal nudge to look, if you can, have a go now. And I could, so I did. And that was the elastic that broke. And I think my lack of experience wouldn't have known to go at that point. So teamwork. Yeah, man, absolutely. Just whatever you do, don't ask me to do a triathlon, mate. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Uh, if you're in the mood for another video right now, then make sure you check out the toughest triathlon in Scotland, which Fraser tackled up in, uh, well, pretty much where the North Coast 500 was, yeah, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, same roads. But just a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, well, I think so. <laughs> uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please hit the uh, thumb up like button. If you want to subscribe, find the globe on screen to get all the other videos on GCN. And uh, that's us. <laughs>